Welcome to another info next video. Today we'll be doing 1999 CAP part B question one. So in this question it's very simple. So it's just electric fields, right? So four charges each of charge plus E, so this is elementary charge, are at the four corners of a square of side A equal to one centimeter. The four charges are fixed in place and are considered to be of point size. Gravity plays no role in this question. All right, so first, sketch a diagram of the electric field due to this charge system. So we know there's gonna be a charge here, 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 and here, right? And they're all E but they're different positive or negative, right? They're all, okay, they're all positive, cool. So we know the charge for outside of this configuration, the field is gonna go like this way for all four of them, right? Now we'll start to bend inwards, right? And then after, here will be just like that. So we just draw on the other side as well. And now we'll look at the insides. No inside, it's gonna first point towards the middle, right? Because that's each of the electric fields. But then they're gonna get slowly get warped. It'll be like something like this. Right? This is not the best explanation, but I'll put a picture on the screen that shows exactly what I'm looking, what I mean after. So this is part A done. So part B, what is the net force acting upon one of the charges? So let's just say we want this charge, right? So for this configuration, we want to see this chart. There's this force, right? And this force, this force, this force, and then this force, right? So for these two forces, we can just find these forces. Let's call this F1. So we know F1 is just going to be equal to KQ squared, where Q equals E, right? Let's say Q equals E. Q squared over A squared, right? And just call it this F2. So F2 is going to be KQ squared over, using Pythagorean continuum, this is root 2A, right? So if this square that, it's going to be just 2A squared. And also we have two of these, right? So just times two here. Now we know it's going to be along this direction, right? Using the Pythagorean theorem, we know. Okay, so we, go, we can just project this on here, right? Oh, this is 45 because these two angles are the same. This is 90 degrees. This has to be 45 and 45. Th this force, right? You can project it onto here by just multiplying by cosine 45. So you find the total net force, the force net. It's just going to be F force 2 plus 2 times of this force. Just think about it, 2 times of F1 times cosine of 45. And if you evaluate this expression, you will get the F net is around 4.41 times 10 to negative 24 newtons. Right. So this is part B done. Part C, what is the electrostatic potential energy of this charge system? So we know let's redraw this. They're all E, right? We're not gonna label them. So the electrostatic potential is all the combinations of the potential of each charge combination. So it's one combination this way, this way, this way, right? One, two, three. Four, five, and six. These are all the potentials, all the couples of the charges that can be made. So see this two as a uh, diagonal using the length of root two a, right? Let's just put that first. So it's gonna be two times kq squared over root two a plus this four of these, right? One, two, three, four. So four times kq squared over a squared. Or A, excuse me, just A. And this will evaluate to give you around 1.25 times 10 to the negative 25 joules. Right, so this is part C done. So part D. Now suppose that two of the charges are protons and the other two are positrons. Positron is electron's antiparticle, right? It has the same mass as an electron, but with a charge of plus E. So the four charges are suddenly released. What are their speeds when they're significant distance apart from each other? So let's see. Okay, this is a configuration. Right, let's have proton here, proton here, positron, just write E for positron. Right, you can understand, E is positron. So we know positron has a mass much less than these protons. So when it first released, these will accelerate away very quickly. So we can assume these two are still stationary. So we can set these original, right? Conservation energy. Originally, we have 1.25, right? So just write this down. 1.25 times 10 to the negative 25. So it's gonna be equal to the remaining things, 
remaining, find this remaining potential between these two. So it's just going to be equal to k q squared over root 2 a plus 2 times 1 half mv squared, right? Where mv squared, this is the mass of the positron. And this is because there's two of them, right? So you can solve for the velocity of the positron. So the velocity of the positron, VE, is going to be around 345 meters per second, right? And now after a while, these two will move away as well. So we can set the potential energy, right? After we eliminate this, right? The potential energy of the system is just going to be U is equal to this thing, this thing right here. It's going to be equal to KQ squared over root 2 times 8, right? Root 2 times 8, yes. Now this is going to be equal to 2 times 1 half mv squared. In this case, this mv represents the speed of the protons and the mass of protons. So solving this, we know the values of mass, and we know this value, so we can solve the velocity of protons is going to be around 3.1 meters per second. This is a 3. And we're done the question. Thanks for watching.